Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the CT Sports Talent Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and I'm pleased to have on the show Patrick O'Neill, who's the assistant coach and also recruiting coordinator for Eastern Connecticut State Baseball. And also, too, and I found this out about maybe less than a half hour ago when I was doing a little bit of research, he's a Berkshire League guy. And something about the Berkshire League players, coaches, that kind of seem to have success. I mean, Birdo won a championship with Nanawag, O'Neill doing great things. With Eastern, also too, the head coach went to Omogo Berkshire League, has also won some things and done some things. But I'm sure we'll get into that with Holden Waller, you know, during our conversation. But Coach O'Neill, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. Very excited to be here. You know, it's awesome to be able to talk to not just a college coach, but also a coach who is a Connecticut guy. Because I think you know, not to take anything away from out of state coaches who coach within the state, but there's something about the Connecticut coaches that kind of just get it a little bit more. And I don't mean any disrespect, but before we get into that, you know, you and I were just going back and forth about just, you know, the times of which you played baseball when you were in high school, coming through the Berkshire league, so on and so forth. Um, what is it about the Berkshire league coach? That is just, it's just the athletes are just different. I can't explain it. What is it about Berkshire League baseball and more so just athletes in general? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think a part of it, and like we were talking about it earlier, I mentioned like Thompson baseball players, at least when I was around and guys way before me and guys after me, like the word gritty is used, you know, like we don't have the facilities or didn't have the facilities that um, like you might see in an FCAC, you know, or in an SEC. Um, like if you want to play the game, like you got to go figure it out. You got to go literally to Thomason. It's just an open field and there's bases obviously. And they just got these nice dugouts a couple of years ago, but you would have thought that it was Yankee stadium when they added those things. Um, so it's one of those situations where if you are an athlete in that environment, like it means you really love the game because it's, it's not for show. Like there's nothing really glamorous about it, you know? Um, and I think the people in the area, like a lot of the people are hardworking people and they're, it's usually like a worker, working class or middle class environment where people are hard workers. And um, the, the Valley trickles into the Berkshire league too. Like my family's from Waterbury and like a lot of people from that area are hardworking people and that trickles up the Berkshire league. And um, I think that it's just, you gotta be tough. You gotta be tougher than, other other people in other places because you don't have as much you know you got to fight for what you do have you know I think that's it's one of those things that kind of separates you know every every conference every area kind of has their own unique you know thing that people like to talk about and I've always believed as far as the Berkshire League is concerned now that you know even though I broadcast in the NBL I have seen the Nanawags I've seen the you know Pomparag I know they're in the SWC but still I know they're a close rival to Nanawag yeah. And also following Thompson because I've done girls basketball, seeing their success, you know, obviously right. mentioned about Berto with Thompson throughout his years, went to Nanawag, wins a championship midseason throughout. Uh, it's just awesome to be able to see the success because let's be honest, everybody talks about the FCAC, the SEC, you know, SWC to a certain degree, depending on the sport, but kind <laughs> of like, Kind of like the ECC, they call it the quiet conference, as I like to call it, because it's far, far away. The Berkshire League really doesn't get talked about that much. No. Um, and there's there's some reasons for that. You know, like if you went and looked at kids from Connecticut that ended up playing college sports, like most of those kids are going to be FCI kids. They're going to be SCC, CC, CCC kids. Um, I think, and it's different now for even when I was in high school. I know the Berkshire League. Um, I don't know, has as much college baseball in terms of all, like all the teams. Nanawag has a very good team. Birdo does a great job over there. Um, but I remember when I was a player, like every team you played, I think had a college baseball player on it. I think it's a little bit different. I don't know if it's because of the area of the state. Like there's a ton of prep schools in the Northwest corner. Like um, you go to Taft, you go to you could go to Salisbury, you could go to Kent, you could go to like Canterbury isn't super far either. Like, um, I think that's part of it. I think the private schools are, are definitely grabbing the, the really good players in the area. Um, but it's just one of those things that I think if you're from, if you're from Berkshire league town, like, and you grew up playing little league and you 
grew up playing town ball, like travel, like travel with your friends. It wasn't like AAU or anything like that. Like we just played for our high school. Um, but I don't know if that's the case anymore. Like I know my high school when I graduated had 90 kids in the class, which is super small. Um, but now it's like 60. Um, and like you mentioned with the ECC, the ECC is, it's the, the area of the state where it does remind me of, of where I grew up. Like there's not a lot going on up there. You know, it's hardworking people, blue collar. And um, it's, it's not as populated. And for that, like, there's not going to be as much resources and facilities to go hit and to go play. And I think that's a part of it. You know, but I think at the same time, you make excellent points. You know, I've always believed, and it's funny because when I've had athletes on, young athletes, both either in high school or even in college, but they're yeah. trying to maybe, you know, they want to go to another school because the one they're at doesn't fit. You know, the biggest question that they kind of tell me is, you know, being noticed. I didn't play a lot in college, or I, you know, because of the COVID year and other factors, the team wasn't good. I didn't get a chance to get looked at. And my kind of response back to them is if you are good enough, people will find you one way or another, regardless if you're all the way up in the ECC, whatever the town is, or if you're in the Berkshire League, if you can play, coaches, you know, will find you. And with you being at Eastern, we'll get into kind of where you were before that, but just really quick, you being at Eastern, especially too, because you kind of have that little Berkshire League thing now where you know you have, you know, you have the tricks of the trade per se. Um, you can find those gems where maybe other people would not be turning over that rock. Does that make sense? hundred percent. And we're looking for those gems, to be honest, like um, it's a lot easier to get discovered than it was when I was in high school, because now you can just go on your phone and post a video on Twitter and 10 coaches are going to call you in a week. Um, but like you said, if you're good, you're going to get discovered like Odie, like he was a Wamogo guy. Um, and like, I remember playing against him. He's the guy's like six, five, like has like throwing 90 miles an hour across the diamond. I'm like, who is this guy? Uh, and then obviously he goes to Amherst, which also was a heard of being a Berkshire League kid. Like I never even heard of the NESCAC until I got hired at Wesleyan. I didn't even realize like how amazing that is academically. And Odie went to Amherst, which, which is one of the best schools in the country, gets drafted, you know, like, um, and he's a Berkshire League guy. I know he did his Canterbury thing. He did his private school thing for a year, which I always make fun of him for. But um, like, that's, that's a really good example. Like, He's not from an area normally where people are going to get drafted or discovered or recruited. And um, if you're good, we're going to find you. And me and Odie being Berkshire League guys, like we were looking for those guys. Like we were at the um, Connecticut senior game yesterday. Um, and like we saw Berkshire League kids in there. And we're like, hey, let's figure out if people haven't saw, seen them yet. Because there's a better chance they haven't been seen than the kid that's at Fairfield Ward, you know. So, um it's, it's definitely something that we're constantly looking for. Like we're doing a prospect camp Sunday and we're like reaching out to these kids that might not have been found yet, you know, and like, Hey, come to camp. We'd love to see you play in person. Um, it's tough in the summer. There's so many different AU tournaments going on and all that. So um, we're tr constantly trying to find those kids that have been overlooked. Do you think in a way, because both you and Oldham Walder both being Berkshire league guys, you kind of have that connection, right? Where you can kind of maybe see things that, you know, no disrespect to the other assistant coaches, right? But you being able to have that eye, be able to find a certain player, maybe within the Berkshire League that nobody has seen yet because of whatever reason. Like you mentioned, the prospect camps, you know, the senior games, et cetera. Do you feel like that kind of connection with the league and just maybe having the same eye kind of helps in a way? Because let's be honest, you're all working for a common cause win the LEC, get back to a regional, get back to a super, and then win the whole dang thing again. Does that make right. sense? It does. Um, I do think our our coaching staff as a whole, first of all, it's very unique. Like me, Odie, and Coach Go Blair, um, we're all in, like, I'm not at 30 yet, and they're in their early 30s. And then we have Coach Senya, who uh, has been awesome. Um, I played for him actually at Eastern. And then we got Coach Servizzi and Coach Reed, who – uh, Coach Reed has five national championships. He's the definition of a winner. He's been at Eastern since, um, I don't know, he was an All-American in the 70s. But Gil Blair and Reed are both Will Manic guys. And very similar to the Berkshire League, if you're a Wyndham kid, if you're a Will Manic kid, first of all, you're super tough. Um, you've you've had probably very hardworking parents and a blue-collar life. 
and they kind of get that same thing that me and Odie see, saw in high school is like this kid was overlooked. He's from, let's say he's from Wyndham high, you know, um, he's a tough kid. Like that's the kind of kid we want. I mean, Gil Blair, Wyndham high guy, one of the greatest players of all time um, at Eastern coach Reed, same thing. He was the first all American at Eastern. He's a Wyndham high guy. So um, me and Odie can't take all the credit for anything like that at all. I mean, coach Gil Blair is an awesome recruiter as well. Um, and then Servizzi has won multiple national championships with probably the two greatest D3 teams of all time. He was on the Trinity team when they went 49 and one. Um, and then the 49 and three Eastern team in 2022. So, uh, and then Senya played at Wheaton and he's phenomenal baseball mind, especially small ball wise. Um, and he was playing in regionals at Wheaton and winning that conference. And Wheaton's a very similar um kind of team that we want to play like we want to play hard we want to play smart like we in is that's the definition of a team that's going to be smart and play hard and that's why it's always eastern and we in when you talk about new england you know i, I agree with you 100 percent because there's so many programs that i think people want to try to mimic right you know for years people wanted to mimic the patriots because of the fact that you know what was the bill belichick line don't tell me what he can't do tell me what he can do yeah. And I think, you know, I don't know as far as what you guys look for in players, but in talking with Coach Ham like I have, now he's at Yale with Woj, and we mentioned with Keen as well. Keen's doing great there with the other two coaches, as I mentioned. Um, Yale kind of has the the blueprint, right, kind of of Eastern. I saw it. And with Olden Waller, when I saw he got hired, I thought it was a slam dunk right away because of what he did with J.P. Pine at Amherst, obviously yeah. – been able to you know help along with now this being your second season um what did you see from this past year you guys made it to a regional if I remember right correct yeah yeah okay. so kind of give me a little bit as far as for people who may not know what was the season like because it was a success in a lot of ways it wasn't a failure because you can't win every year but there was a whole lot to be proud of yeah um yeah we won we won our league which obviously um, is a goal. It's not the goal at Eastern. I might sound a little arrogant, but that's, it's true. Like you go to Eastern to win a national championship. That's why they have the banners hanging up there. Like we don't have banners for winning the conference. You know, we don't have flags flying for, for making a regional. Um, so yeah, in terms of a success, we won the league. We, um, had a lot of new faces, a lot of new arms, especially. I mean, we lost 80% of the arms that were in the World Series in 2022. Um, and if you look at our top two arms, statistically, it was Dan Driscoll and, and Matt Wooten, who were both first-year arms for us. Driscoll obviously came from Mitchell, and Wooten was at Eastern prior, but didn't have a ton of innings. Um, so there's a lot of unknown going into the spring. We knew we were going to be good. Um, we had a good leadership with Matt Malcolm and uh, Noah Plantamaro and, and Donahue, who were three guys that literally have done, been there before, um, which I think helped us a lot in the regular season. And then in the LEC tournament, like, I don't think anyone was nervous because they're like, we're supposed to be in this. We're supposed to win it, you know? Um, and I think that that went a long way. Uh, in terms of the regional, we didn't play well to our standards, um, but it's a good problem to have. It's like, oh, we didn't play well in the national tournament. We didn't like, you know, like um, we threw two sophomores and a freshman in the regional. You know, those were the three starters of the three games that we played. Um, so in terms of pitching, we're everyone's back for the most part. And we're bringing in really good arms, both out of the high school and out of the transfer portal, which is very exciting. Um, and that's, that's baseball. Like the best teams have the best arms. So um, in terms of hitting, like our outfield's really, really, really good. You know, like Clay and Wright, Ray Leonzi, who's a Fairfield transfer tech, a kid from Trumbull um, is in center. And then we got Josh Cohen left, who was a Southington kid. And then we have two guys on our bench that are going to probably start and every other LEC outfield with Alejandro Soriano and Mason Balmer, who um, kind of platoon DH, who both hit over 350. Um, so we're kind of just 
trying to figure out one or two bats. Um, I think with our catching situation, Matt Bradbury and Hank Penders are two really good catchers that um, are going to be guys that we rely on to catch major games. And um, it's one of those things that we have a lot of talent and that's kind of how Eastern has been. Um, so we're really looking forward to the future. Um, but I do think that over the past season, our strength was our leadership. Our strength was experience, but we also had um, a lot of new faces on the mound, which isn't usually going to go hand in hand, you know, um, but um, like the Andrew school came from Mitchell. He, he was in all New England as a freshman. He pitched in the regional as a freshman, you know, so um, it, it was, it was fun. It was fun to be back. It's fun to win. You know, like that was a big part of coming back to Eastern was to win. Um, yeah. But in terms of the, the season, it was a success to a degree, but it, at, at our standards at Eastern Connecticut, um, the job wasn't finished, which most of the time it's like, you're not going to win a national championship every year, but that's always the goal. And we don't want it to ever be in a spot where it's not, that's not the goal. You know, coach, I almost feel like, and I know we're running out of time, so this will be my last question. I, I almost feel like the getting to that national championship, because I think Eastern will be back. It seems like there's just something going on, obviously coming off of losing in the regional. You mentioned what you have coming back. When you've got your top arms that were extremely young, yeah, I, they can only get better, right? As long, God willing, they don't get injured. You can picture what they could potentially be over the course of this coming season, right? And... I would think that that, uh, you know, as I mentioned, that drive and that kind of the, okay, we didn't get there. So now we're hungrier, right? Not to say you weren't hungry before, but now, you know, this group didn't get a natty and now it's like, okay, we're all back again. Let's get back to that national championship thing because some guys from that are still here and they've been flashing that ring around. We want one of those. Does that make sense? hundred percent. Um, I think the 2022 team had a huge chip on their shoulder. Um, they didn't win the conference in 2021. They lost Southern Maine. They made a regional, but, um, they went oh and two in that regional in 21 and they had a, a lot of chips, you know, um, they didn't win a re they didn't win the conference, but prior to that for a while, I think since my senior year. So it, that was very unlike, unlike Eastern. Um, so they had that chip. You know, and they rode they rode that all the way to the World Series. Um, so I think for us, it's um, we've created that chip again. You know, we didn't have a good regional. Um, we didn't win a World Series. The kids that we we're bringing in, that the high schools we recruited, we were like, hey, we just won a World Series. You're coming here to win a World Series. So that's part of it too. Is the the kids that are coming into Eastern, the the freshmen out of high school, like that's why they came here, you know? So they have a lot to prove, which is obviously something that you could use as fire. Um, and I know there's some guys that have individual chips too, like, um, like Jason Claiborne hit 366 and, um, was the LEC tournament player of the, of the, of the tournament or of the year or whatever, uh, LEC tournament player of the week. Um, he wasn't all, he wasn't all, all wasn't all, all new England. And there's guys on that list that, um, I thought Clay was better than, um, so, um, and he, he's a guy that's like, I don't care about that stuff, but I know that I want to use something like that as fuel, you know? Um, and there's a lot of guys like, like Matt Malcolm, for example, he wasn't an all American the year prior and he's like, I'm going to come back and be an all American. And he did, you know? So, um, we're always going to find that chip. It's, that's part of a, of a winning culture. Um, Odie does a great job of motivating our guys and, um, coach Reed, he's won five national championships and he's going to find a way to have a chip any, every season. I'm like, 10, you've literally done it all. Like you can't get mad about anything. He's like, Nope, new season. I hate them. Let's beat them. You know, like we're going to find ways to win. We're going to find ways to be motivated. And, um, we're fortunate to have that be the case at Eastern. Coach, I really appreciate you coming on. I could talk to you forever, but we're running out of time. Hopefully I can get you back on uh, before the baseball season starts to be able to catch up with you, but stay in touch. Love to be able to talk with you again. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. I appreciate you having me. I'll wrap things up here in the CT Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm going to try to find them all. Enjoy their shit, everybody, and be well.